go back out, ready for another day of Sanders body repairs. Um, I'm up here today and we have a Corsa in with side damage. It's um, crumpled on the backside. Um, you see obviously the rear quarter, the door is taking a hit. Um, and we've got a nice new tool that we're gonna try out. And uh, the guys at IPS in Swansea have helped us out and maybe let's bore it. So we're gonna sample it and hopefully we can order one if it's any good. But uh, yeah, come and have a look and uh, see how it works for us. Oh, this is Airfix. What's it called? GYS. GYS is the company. GY by GYS. It's got a vacuum off an airline that sucks to the floor. You'd be well impressed with this now. Okay, I'll show you. You would not believe it. The floor is not even even. It's dusty or sturdy, but you'd be surprised how good this suction is right now. So yeah, so we'll either use a 60 or an 80, and we'll buzz this down to the 3M drill right now. Okay. <laughs> And there we have it, just like that. So remember to get all these little indensity sections out because obviously when we use a spot welder, it won't stick to the paint, it'll burn. So yeah, so we've prepped the surface now with the area. Okay, we've blown this off an airline. We've made sure there's no paint in any of the ingressors. And we're gonna start working down this line here and we're gonna start pulling it out with a spot puller with our new tool. Pull it out the dents as best we can first. It's made a hell of a difference. Just so you know as well, so this is the spot puller we used, and this is the same one we used in the last video doing the Fiesta. Matthew's putting up these on now. Nice and tight, okay, nice and close all the way down. So you want as much tension on there then, so when it pulls, they don't pop off. I'll show you now how close these are. And don't forget, these are reusable, okay? You see already, just yeah, by using the sucker, we've pulled out a yeah, load of dents already. Love you. Are you ready? So yeah, if you look underneath here, you can see the seal that goes on the edge, and this will actually suck on the floor, so we can't move. We'll do a little demonstration for that now. I won't shift now and I won't budge. Just to show you guys, I am literally pulling on this and it is not budging. So yeah, just to show, that actually pulled the welds off and still stuck to the floor. So the initial pull we just done now, down this line, is more structural. So we're going to start pulling the dent out. You can see already the vast improvement. So in, it's almost there already. Okay, so we're on the pull two now. So we're going to start actually taking the dent out itself and following it. You would have seen in the last clip of Matthew was tapping this in. Because remember, metal shrinks and stretches. You've got to work both areas at the same time. Going on for another pull now. 
the second is on the ground, making sure it obviously it doesn't lift. On the last clip through the scene that it's pulled off, the great thing about this tool is it didn't bounce back or retract. Uh, no, I think the street there is, yeah. There we are. Another mile ready. Get it off, Do you see the way it pulled the car back then? Remember when you take these off, we twist them so we don't pull through the metal. All these then will buzz off then. So now it's about obviously chasing the dent. The fucking circus and the tight rope boys. So a little crease left down by here and a little indent by you to be working on and it should be this quarter panel sorted and then we'll be on to the door. Right, not going to bore you too much, Matthew's on the last dent right now and then we'll use the actual spot puller on the little crease that we've got. We'll show you that as well. We'll get on to the door but more importantly we'll show you the finished result and well and we have a time frame of how long it's taken us to achieve this. Okay, right Matthew just buzzing that off. Talk about this. So this adjusts up and down where the ratchet is. So where that goes versus the dent, obviously it works out that you can pull. There. So yeah, so you can apply pressure in different parts. So I can use a loop as well on it too. Top so yeah, so if you were to put that higher up, you can use the force to pull down, you can use it on bottom on sills and stuff. This doesn't retract automatically your spring back either, so it's got like a safety feature on it, and this is really, really tight. cracks on that is safe to say that dent is actually out out yeah. Yeah, this dent isn't uh, as extravagant as ever you can see the crease in it now obviously matthew's doing the lower part towards the structural edge of the door he's going to pull this out first and hopefully he'll pull out this area and then he's working out from the top of there So this tool in theory makes a two-man job one man. We're just testing it up to something. Else. Even though two men are doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, one man and one boy, is I it? Like <laughs> I'll do it you know. Oh, yeah. this and the 
attention is actually pulling the door out now. When we slacken this off, the door will go back. That just shows how much force and power this has. Yeah, we're slacking it off. And you see it close the gap. So there you are. Look at that. That just shows how straight it is now. Because I know obviously the light affects all these areas. It makes it look like it's a bit more dented in. But yeah, a few more little pulls, spots here and there. And a little skim. And it's like brand new. Look at that shot. Perfect. Yeah, so we go on to the dent puller now. The little spot puller. Just to get the little spots out. Um, straighten out a little bit before we buzz them off and then we get the skim onto it. But yeah, this little tool is a proper little bad boy. So yeah, I've just finished this off now. I'm sure you will agree. That is one hell of a difference caved in to a straight panel and it's still structurally solid and has all its utility. Look at that. Right, whilst Matthew gets ready for a skim of filler on you, I'm gonna make a quick cup of tea. Cup of tea boys! Cup of tea boys! It's not tea they want, it's a fucking good idea. But yeah, come on, be fair. That's a cracking job, isn't it? Like a math, good job or minter. Yeah, Martin, just buzzing over it quickly, he's just keying up the area in readiness for the fiberglass to stick to. And the reason we use fiberglass is because we're going on the bare metal. But yeah, it just gives it a bit of a key to so stick and it'll be a switch. So one other thing I want to cover off before I make cups of tea. Um, somebody's asked in the past before about why we don't use an epoxy primer before we apply the fiberglass. So if you know anything about body work and paint work, okay, you can apply the fiberglass direct to metal. Fiberglass is waterproof, okay? So the whole the reason people use an epoxy um, an epoxy primer is to seal it. We don't need a seal it because we are naturally sealing it with fiberglass. Fiberglass has all the additives and all the bits and pieces in it naturally to do the job of what we need to do. Um, once we fiberglass it, we sand that back and we just give a filler. Then obviously we will high build prime it, then we go through the grades and then we get into paint. There we go, the kettle's just boiling. Going back to our last point, okay? I'm not saying that people who use epoxy primer are doing it wrong, okay? Everybody does things differently, okay? Matthew's got over 20 to 25 years of experience in the body shop industry. Um, and look, what he says is gold dust to me. I believe every single thing and every word with integrity because he's taught me and uh, the jobs he does are second to none. Um, people do use it, people have different techniques and I'm not saying that anybody does things right or wrong. So look, the right thing would be to do if we were gonna leave this car for days and days and put it outside and go back and do the repair, probably we would use an epoxy primer, um, but we don't need to seal it, okay? So we're gonna repair it, get it back to factory standard and get it out the door from customer over the next few days. And we're gonna get that skimmer filler on now. We flap that back and then we'll, we'll block it back. We get the filler on it, high build primer, get the base on it, get the clear on it, flat it back, sand it, polish it, make it look great, okay? See you soon. Have a guess of whose tea is who. Well, to be honest, it's not hard to tell, is it? With the dash on, let's see how's mine. A week go on. Matthew likes it strong. In case you have come here, two sugars, milk, dash of milk, strong for Matthew. Right, I want to go back a second to actually show how flat this panel is now when we bed it out. Look at that. That was absolutely amazing. Right, Matthew's uh, mixing the fiberglass. You can see that we've masked the inside down here. Gosh, I gotta repeat again, and sounds like I am on repeat. 
But look at that already. Look how streaked it is. You'd never think I was caved in. So go back to the old videos, watch the escort, watch the other cars we've done. So like icing a cake, guys, right? Okay? How you apply your product is how your finish is gonna come off. There you are. Matthew's blown this off of an airline, so the surface is all keyed up and it's nice and clean. Otherwise, this fiberglass won't stick. You don't want to lift it off the way. Matthew's doing a bit of modelling today for us in this video. He doesn't really, well, he rarely makes an appearance in the background. So I thought we'd get him on a camera today to show off his handiwork. So you can take a credit for it. Oh, so I'm skiving off drinking my cup of tea, innit? I'll take it. You'll take it. That's nice, guys. That's a nice skim. Don't forget, this is the first skim, so we'll go through it. Obviously, Matthew buzz this off then. We'll go through the grades. We'll explain that in the next clip. Yeah, I'm going to end this right now. And we'll uh, catch up with you soon. There we are. Obviously, don't forget to keep the line. This will be sanded out there anyway. Yeah. Take a look for another angle. I'm sure you remember what it looked like in the start of the video on the clips. So there we are, there's a fiberglass buzz down to an 80. Matthew's now mixing up the body filler. So it's got his hardener in there ready. And again, we'll be skimming this all nicely. Remember, the nicer you put it on, the nicer it is to finish it off and the easier. You can slop it on, do you mean? But you won't get half finish. <laughs> It'll take you longer, won't it? <laughs> Not many attempts, Matt. <laughs> I've learned the hard way myself over the years. Two years in the preparation and getting it right. Right first time. You have big spreads. We're only using a standard size spreader. You can use a bigger one. Do you mean? These work well. Again, okay, we're using IPS's very own, it's new on the market, their own filler, which is supplied from IPS in Swansea. It seems to be working really well. We're open for trying new brands, and like I said, IPS being local and our supplier, it seems rude not to. It's going on right, Matt, yeah? Lovely, I love it. Here we are. As they say from the horse's mouth itself, it's perfect. You can see it's nice. No pockets, no nonsense. It's not tearing or anything. It's mixed lovely. And it's going on nice and smooth. Okay, so we're going to leave this dry for the next 10 to 15 minutes. Let it flash off a little bit. Let it go hard. And then obviously we'll start sanding it down. We'll see what it's like. Don't forget, obviously, the whole guy coat and stuff to, to make sure it's level. Um, we'll go through, obviously, the grades. We'll be using a 240 and a 400. Obviously a primer, obviously like, um, what's it called? My oh, yeah, it's going today, I tell you, loads going on outside of this video. Um, obviously we'll have a guy coat again and we just block it off, it'll be great. Um, the car will obviously be painted in tomorrow. Um, the finished video won't, sorry, the finished product won't be on this actual video. Just like that. But what it actually will be, okay, right? So if you look at my community story, I'll share on there, the finished item, just like the Fiesta. Don't forget to go on there and have a look, okay? Because that's where you'll see the finished car. Also, don't forget to look on my story on Instagram, okay? Deathbox Dan, if you're following. Um, I think of Deathbox Dan too on TikTok. Um, we share a lot of stuff on there too. If you're 
Come on, go and have a look. There's loads of bodywork stuff. And loads of cool retros, cool Fords and cars and stuff, okay? See you there. There we are, so Matthew's buzzing that off with an 80 grit. We worked down then to 240 and a 400. We work it out then so flat it is, so obviously we get the block on it. Um, the guy caught and sand it back down, get it into some primer and get it into paint. But like I said, you're not going to see the painted item on pink car, should I say, on today. You will see it on my story, on my community feed, okay? So stay close to that, but it will be up. But yeah, this is all about preparation work, about pulling that dent out, making sure it's poker straight for you, okay? Thank you. We are, we're on the block now, on a 180 grit. Twelve seconds later. Okay, so Matthew's blocked that out now, so it's nice and straight. Just buzzing all this quickly with a 240 grit. Okay, so he's taking out scratches on the paint work, which is the 80, which we keyed into. Once this is done, we'll be going over that end with a 400. Okay, so that is in ready and in preparation for paint. Okay, so this is the panel ready for paint. Really nice and flat, great finish of that mat. So any open edges, etch primer, okay? This is all nice and neat, follow this line all the way down here. Etch primer around here, obviously, first of all, we're gonna blow it off. We're gonna panel white bits, we're gonna get any grease and all that kind of stuff off. Um, yeah, etch primer, obviously masked up and stuff. Get then the car in a high build primer, 400 feather wire out, and then in readiness for paint. I'm going to leave the video here right now and you will see this on my community story and my feeds. Uh, it'll be a great job, no doubt. I 110% guarantee that. Um, stay around. Any questions, don't forget to ask. Also hit up IPS, okay, if you want one of those pullers or any of the tools that we have used or any supplies. They're good as gold. Speak to Phil or speak to Katie, okay? But anyway, until next time, see you soon.